Sheffield University, and these are undergraduates, the kind of young adults you'd associate with everyday college life. However, other people, generally of more mature years, also have an important learning role within the student structure. They are united within a common quest for knowledge and have returned as part-time students on degree courses instigated by TIL, the Institute for Lifelong Learning at Sheffield University. But the big question for most people who are considering returning to learning is which subject to study and what courses are available. However much they enjoy part-time study, there is much more to consider. So, how about a single mum with three growing boys, a job and a home to run, for example? Meet Liz Hill. What, in her opinion, are the most important issues that new students should bear in mind? I think the, the most important thing to do is to really familiarise yourself with all the information that you first get, make okay. sure you read everything, um, get in touch with your tutors, find out who your personal tutor is, find out all their email addresses, um, have a good look round the university, find out where the libraries are, find out how it all works and I think the single most important thing is to just ask people, they're there to help you and they really want you to succeed so they'll go the extra mile to help you as well so just make sure you keep in touch with people. Make sure that you plan your week out, have a look at your diary, have a look at the commitments that you've got and really sort of allocate your some yourself some time for your university work. Make sure you've got a space at home where you've got your computer and your books, your papers, that kind of thing. And, and allocate yourself some time for actually getting down and, and doing some reading and some studying. But I think also don't put too much stress on yourself. Make sure you enjoy it as well. I think for me personally, I'm a single mom working with three kids and the practical issues are sort of, you know, getting three kids from A to B and making sure that they get to do all their things and, and having the time to, you know, get to the library, to make sure your computer's working, to make sure you've got paper for your computer and memory sticks and all that kind of thing. So again, really, it's about organisation. It's about organising yourself. But it's, um, again, the university's there to help. So if you do have any practical issues, they can help you with those things as well.
It's been a fantastic journey for me. I'm the first person in my family to go to university. And my kids, um, you know, I've really got raised expectations for my kids now. My eldest son is dyslexic and struggles at school, but he said the other day, oh, when I do my A-levels and when I go to university, and I'm not sure he would have said that if I hadn't have gone to university as well. So it's, you know, it's been a really important journey for me and the university are fantastic especially for mature students there are a lot of resources out there and a lot of till you know will help you and the administration staff are great and the tutors are always on hand via email or telephone so it's it's a fantastic journey it's hard work but it's you know make sure you have fun and enjoy it as well what material such as textbooks will they need once they have enrolled fortunately the local bookstore usually has the answer Leaving Liz Hill to continue her studies, we'll now discuss the courses available with Adam White, course coordinator for the Certificate in Music and Creative Media. Well, TIL is a, an open access department uh, within the university and we offer a number of different pathways depending on the kind of uh, student that you are. So on the one hand, we have part-time degrees that might stretch over as many as six years but can be done within four years and we have two-year part-time certificates, which are the equivalent of one year's full-time degree. Um, in addition to that, you could just do an individual module. If you had a passion for Spanish or for creative writing, for example, you could just come in and do one evening a week um, for one semester. Um, in addition to that, we also run foundation degrees in which you can combine um, your, your, your daytime job with studying in the evening. I come from a background which makes me very passionate about adult education and part-time learning anyway because I'm somebody that left school without any qualifications or just two GCSEs um, and part-time learning offered me a pathway out of my experience and onto a new career and obviously since then I've, I've become a university lecturer and, and a musician and I did that really by finding through my local adult education college a real passion for, for learning, for learning the things that I wanted to learn rather than the things that I'd been taught at school. Um, and I found the whole experience completely exhilarating from the contacts with other students, from the, the new opportunities, both intellectual and practical, that it offered me. And um, I studied on and off for over five years um, as a part-time student. And I have to say it's one of the most enjoyable periods of, of, my, own, of my own life. I think there are the obvious practical advantages in that people can maintain uh, a busy family life with responsibilities at home and also perhaps at work and they can come to Till and study in the evening um, and the courses are very flexible so most of the courses are in the evenings sort of six till nine is our most common slot sometimes there's Saturday workshops or field trips out of those hours but it does mean that people can combine study with with the kind of normal I suppose pressures of, of working and having a family life so from that point of view it's very advantageous I think secondly, there's the whole thing about being a part-time student, which enables you to use your time away from the seminars to do individual research, personal development, spend time in the library, go to concerts, see films, go on field trips again, really immerse yourself really in a, uh, in, in a way of living that's about learning and about personal growth. I think alongside the ability to maintain a, a busy professional and perhaps family life, part-time learning um, often has specific vocational courses that enable you to follow a particular career path. So 
perhaps you've always had a passion for languages. Part-time learning within TIL will enable you to think about the kind of careers that using a language might involve. The same with, with music and creative writing, social and political studies. We try and make sure that our students are aware of the career opportunities that will emerge from studying the particular course that they're interested in. Okay, so shall we have a go at this, guys? And see how we go. <clears throat> when you try your best but you don't succeed When you get what Many TIL students wish to explore creative and artistic talents they have as yet been unable to develop. The Certificate in Music and Creative Media offers one such route. The Certificate in Creative Writing is another popular course that can lead to a new, full or part-time career. Whilst these are qualifications in their own right, they can also lead to a full degree programme in Literature and Creative Media. But however important their part-time studies are to TIL students, they usually need to fit them in around shopping, jobs and family. The part-time degree courses at TIL often include field trips such as this one for earth science and geology. These lead to BSc degrees in natural and human environments and archaeology, for example, all of which include a large element of practical scientific investigation. OK, right, okay. it doesn't look like a typical piece, but it's just a piece of millstone grit. Right, it's just so wide, that's why I was wondering. OK. Um, any reasons you can think of? Have you noticed anything as we walked up here? Well, the ground is a bit peaty. And okay, there was some black stuff in the path, yeah. which was peat. And peat, chemically... Is acidic. It's fairly acidic. And so when you get peat on top of gritstone, the acid in the peat, or the acidic nature of the peat, bleaches. It, it bleaches the, the grains, and it right. eats away any little bits of cement holding the grains together, and you tend to get this white bleached... Etched oh, right. rock. Interesting. Okay. Um, have you ever been up on Kinder Scout? Yes, and yeah. And where the peats retreating off the rocks, the bright white. Yeah, they are. And yeah. that's the effect of the right. peat. It's not okay. the natural, original colour of the rock. Now, any particular grains you can see in here? Well, there's a bit of quartz there, I think. Yeah, yeah. That, that big piece there. Anything else? Any different colours? Um, well, there's some brownie bits, but I'm not sure what they are. OK, they're the feldspar, and they tend to be the bits that give the rock its colour. Right. Um, but in this case, basically the iron's being leached off the surface. Right. And, and they're starting to go a bit white. OK. OK? Yep. So, very, very nice etched, bleached bit of millstone grit. Yes, lovely.
back in the science department and an explanation of how individual courses differ. Well, I can give you an example, I think, with the one that we do, which is a Bachelor of Science honours degree in Natural and Human Environments and Combined Studies. Um, in that, we combine the subject areas of geology and ecology, natural history, um, archaeology and the historic landscape. Uh, and really what it's, it's trying to do is, is to investigate the whole landscape, not just one particular part of it. So, so that, that's, I, I think, the difference in the science course that we take here. Well, the courses are taught in, in variable ways. I mean, the seminars and tutorials, um, the face-to-face the -face classroom sessions. Uh, we've got a new foundation degree that's coming along shortly, which will have distance learning elements in it and a small residential component. And we also have uh, quite a lot of field studies as well, because we think, you know, a, a, a lot of... If you're studying the landscape, you really have to be there, look at it, you know, and examine it yourself uh, firsthand. So, so that we think that the field study element is quite important to it. Well, the kind of people that enrol in these courses are very varied indeed. Um, it's young people, relatively young people, relatively older people. Um, we have people, you know, from different walks of life, different professions uh, and, and occupations. I, I suppose quite a lot of them are like me, you know, who um, didn't enter higher education until I think I was 38 when I, when I you know, first started studies there. Uh, and really, you know, not everybody falls into that strict pattern of go to school, do A-levels, go to university and then get a job. You know, life doesn't always work like that. And it's really nice to give people an opportunity to, to have a second chance, really. <laughs> Information technology and computers have become a part of everyday life and many jobs depend on them. But how we manage information and enable people to use it is just as vital. And this is what the BSc course in Information Technology and Organisations is about. A vital feature of modern business life and travel is a knowledge of foreign languages. The language courses in French and Spanish offered by TIL start at the complete beginner's level and go on to advanced level. They also give students the chance to progress to the BA courses in French studies and Spanish and Latin American studies. Until you can start doing French at the beginner, French and Spanish at the beginner, and carry on to do a part-time degree in French and or Spanish. We offer four stages from stage one to stage four. The stages last an, ac an academic year, which means from late September till mid-May. They are taught in French and if you are doing Spanish, in Spanish. The teaching is rather informal. Uh, we use a textbook uh, uh, for French and for Spanish and the textbook is uh, usually complemented by the use of internet in class um, as well as some other audiovisual aid. So you can do a part-time degree in French and or in Spanish at TIL. We offer language modules as well as cultural modules such as cinema, a bit of literature, history, as well as some other modules which look at other aspects of culture in France or a francophone country and in Spain or in any other Latin American countries. The teaching lasts for 12 weeks. It, they us it usually happens in the evening, two hours per evening. The teaching is rather informal. They are taught, well, the modules are taught in French and in Spanish. 
and the groups above all in the cultural modules are rather small but are very supportive. Our students are of different ages as well as different backgrounds. They come from different backgrounds but they do share a similar interest in languages as well as the culture of the country uh, they are learning about. Um, they are usually very enthusiastic to learn even more about the culture, about the country, about current affairs in the country, and um, this is a very supportive group. Um, the fact that uh, the learners come from different backgrounds and are of different ages means that the part-time degree have, um, have to be very flexible in teaching and learning languages at TIL. And I'll talk a little bit about their experiences. And then the conclusion is about la variedad de experiencias que tenían, cómo fue Sheffield, cómo, cómo es Sheffield como un lugar para un, un exilio, un exiliado, y un poco... Gaining confidence in speaking and writing the languages is central to the courses. Nearly all teaching for the degree courses is done in French and Spanish by tutors who are native speakers. Y la comunidad Good links between the university and its surrounding communities are essential so that adults from all backgrounds can return to education. The new foundation degree program, Working with Communities, has been designed with this in mind. Anita Franklin, Program Director of the MA and Foundation Degrees in Working with the Community, explains the main differences and the new characteristics of both these areas of study. Right, well, you know, most people don't know what a foundation degree is, and so um, Sheffield University itself is um, pioneering this in the sense that this is our very first foundation degree at Sheffield University. And foundation degrees are the government's response to employers' concern over the employability of workers. And so what we have is a qualification, which on the one hand is very academic, but on the other hand is vocational and has been in some sense inspired by employers' concerns with regard to employability. And in our case, we put that together into a community development program. And of course, here in South Yorkshire, we've seen a lot of changes within various communities over the years. And so this is a great time to have developed um, a Working with Communities program. And what we have found is that people have been really, have been waiting for this. They have been waiting for this. They're all over the region. We have lots of different uh, courses, short courses, one-off courses and what have you in the area of community development. But our course in some sense was a way of consolidating that interest in community development and making sure that there's a proper progression from um, beginner stage all the way through to intermediate stage, all the way through to having a BA or having an MA. And um, we've been quite successful. This is our third cohort that we um, uh, have had. And you know, we haven't even had a, a group graduate yet. And yet, for our very first cohort, over 75% have actually got a better job uh, in, in terms of pay, have been made permanent, have um, received a promotion, or have changed jobs, have changed uh, actual organizations that they work for. That's three quarters. I wonder how many other programs could, um, uh, you know, be able to, to cite that kind of figure. So all of us as a team, especially within TIL, we're very proud of our achievements so far. I'm a community development worker for Sheffield Primary Care Trust and my role is to deliver race equality and mental health for BME communities. So basically it's working with both communities and mental health services to ensure that they meet the needs of black minority ethnic communities. 
it's actually helped me quite a great deal from the beginning um, right till now. Um, when I first started the course, I was a family worker at a children's centre in Rotherham, working with mainly the Pakistani women. Um, but as I kind of went through the course, I've developed the skills, I feel, and the confidence to kind of apply for other jobs, which included um, working with uh, Sheffield Primary Care Trust. So now as a community development worker, I'm able to use them kind of the knowledge, the information in my uh, job as a community development worker. And uh, the biggest thing is um, actually putting everything into practice. So whether it's kind of the modules, social exclusion, researching with communities, the kind of skills or whatever I learn in theory, I'm able to use that um, hands on really. Um, I do feel it has really um, helped me develop professionally and also um, as, as a person as well. Studying with Till is challenging for students, but one of the more satisfying results they experience is gaining knowledge, understanding and the ability to use and pass this on to others. So Till is your chance to follow the path that these and hundreds of other students have already followed. It's not as difficult as you might think, whatever your background and present level of education. Get in contact with us now. It's your future. Isn't it time you took charge of it? Mm -hmm.